my friends. Can I be honest with you for a second? I really miss you guys. I miss midweek. I miss, I miss it. But it's okay. We got another day. Today's a new day. Midweek lives happening. We got small groups. We got our game. We got the word week two of life in the blender. It's okay. I might be going a little bit crazy. But God is good. So we gotta get this thing going. We got a game today. Like I said, we're in we're in life in the blender. I just want to make sure I say it right. I like calling it for short lit B. So we have that week two of it happening. TJ's bringing the word. We got our worship like normal. We got a special guest doing a little little testimony. Uh, I'm excited to hear that. But we got a game to start us off. So here we go with the game. What is up, Midweek Live? My name is Wes Nielsen. Hold on, my dad's being loud. Hey, Dad. He's got earbuds in. He can't hear anything. What is up, Midweek Live? My name is Wes Nielsen, and I am back again this week with you guys for another game. Now, if you guys were tuning in last week, we started a new series called Life in the Blender. And to celebrate that with a good kickoff, we had our contestants drink a disgusting blended Happy Meal from McDonald's. Now, this week we wanted to continue along the lines of the theme Life in the Blender with another Blender game. We are going to play a game called Will It Blend? I got help from my good friend Tom today. Um, he's going to be helping us out along with six super awesome contestants. Let's go ahead and meet them all right now. From the Alafaya campus, we've got Sophie. Hi. Awesome. Next to the Alafaya campus, we have Austin. Hello. Next we have from the Sand Lake campus, Adriana. Hi. Also from the Sand Lake campus, we've got Jacob. Hello. And lastly, we have a brother and sister duo from our Winter Garden campus, Aiden and Zoe. Hi. Hi. Perfect. We want you guys to play along also, though. So, at home, I want you guys to try and see if you can guess these correctly also. All right? Ready? Round one, we're going to start off easy, and we're going to go with glow sticks. Reveal your answers in three, two, one, go. Oh, yes from everybody. All right, so we got a bunch of people saying yes for the glow sticks. Let's find out. Let's turn the lights off for effect. That is a 12-hour lantern. Don't drink this. Good job. Start out with an easy one. You guys all got it correct. One point across the board. Way to go. All right. Now we're going to go on to round two. In round two, we're going to give you guys kind of a curveball. Round two, do you guys think that Justin Bieber will blend? Now I'm going to have you guys show me your answers in three, two, one. All right, we got yeses from everybody except for Sophia. Let's see who is correct. What a bridge, Justin. What's with the unicorn? He's got CDs, a movie, and his own autobiography. Singers aren't supposed to have dairy before a show, but we all know I'm a rule breaker. Pizza is just so good. Bieber, yes, he will blend. So it looks like everybody except for Sophia got a point on that one. Sorry, Sophia. But hey, you can make it up with this next round. Round three. We're going to see if you guys think that Tom can blend an Amazon Echo. Show me your results in three, two, one. 
Oh, okay, all right. Results are spread across the board. This is just like I, just what I like to see. Let's see who's right. Alexa, order some honey roasted peanuts and some apples from Whole Foods. That sounds delicious, Tom. Your order has been placed. Wow, that was sure easy. Thanks, Alexa. and Jacob. So congratulations. Good job. You guys each got another point for your team, which means at the end of round three, we have Jacob and Aiden in the lead, each with three points. Everyone else trailing just behind with two points, except for Sophia, who's got only one point. But you're not out of it yet. Good news is we are moving on to round four, which is worth three whole points now. So it's still anybody's game. All right, round four is going to be a Ford Fiesta. That's right, that's a car. Do you guys think that a Ford Fiesta can be blended? We're gonna show you the answers in three, two, one, reveal. Alrighty, yeses from everybody except for Austin who says no. Let's see who's right and find out. The Blendtec Total Blender can blend almost anything. It's got boron steel in it to help make us safe. Why not? I think I'm gonna push the Fiesta button. Oh, Ryan, this is gonna take forever. Wow, would you look at that? A Ford Fiesta does not blend, which means that Austin gets three full points for being the only one that got it right. That means at the end of round four, Austin has now jumped into the leader position with five points. Jacob and Aiden trailing with three points. Everyone else with two points. And Sophia still in last with one point. Well, Sophia, I have great news for you because this last round is worth five whole points. Five points, which means that if you get this right, you can jump to six points and still be at the top. So it is still anybody's game. Are you guys ready for the final round, round five? Yeah? All right. Well, here's your object. Do you guys think that an action figure can be blended? All right. Everybody says yes, except for Adriana, who does not think that an action figure can be blended. All right. Let's see who is correct. The world is a dangerous place. It's full of bad guys. And the two greatest forces for good in the world are the Blendtec Total Blender and Chuck Norris. Let's press the Walker Texas Ranger button. Ugh, bad guy smoke. Don't breathe this. Wow, Chuck. I guess that total gem really works. No, Chuck Norris cannot be blended, which means the winner of this week's game is drum roll, please. Adriana! <laughs> Adriana from our Sand Lake campus is going to be our winner today. Congratulations, Adriana. What do you have to say for yourself? Ooh, I'd like to thank all my Sand Lake pastors. Thank you. Congratulations. Ooh. Well done. Thank you, Sand Lake campus. You guys are awesome. Well, with that, my name is Wes Nielsen, and I'm so happy to be here with you guys, but my time is now up, so I'm going to send it over to the worship team. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. 
What's up, DC students? This is the time we get to look forward to every week where we join together, no matter where we are, and worship God together. So I'm going to encourage you right now to remove any distractions, anything that might take your attention away from giving our God the praise he deserves. And let's lift up the name of Jesus because we know that there is so much power in his name and we can call on his name whenever, wherever. So no matter where you are, let's lift up the name of Jesus together. Come on, put your hands together. We declare the name of Jesus.
What is up, Midweek Live family? Pastor T. Jam here. And if you guys don't know it yet, I'm a husband of one, father of three, discipler of many. And I'm just a nobody trying to tell. Well, you guys already know that. If you guys don't know it yet, find someone who knows me and they'll give you that extended intro. Anyways, I want to take advantage of every minute of tonight. So please bow down your head, close your eyes, and let's pray. Father God, once again, I just thank you that I get to be your mouthpiece tonight. And I'm also clinging on to the fact that your word does not return void. May everything that I think, say, and do bring glory to your name, encourage the people watching this video, and make the devil pay. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, tonight we're going to take a closer look at Joseph's story in Genesis 39. So grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, get your Bibles. Let's dive in. Here's the summary of the passage. Joseph was sold as a slave to Potiphar. Potiphar is Pharaoh's commander of the guard. He's pretty much a high-level individual. And Potiphar found favor in Joseph, and he made Joseph, he elevated him, he promoted him to be in charge of all his possessions. He even gave him the highest rank in his household. So everything was pretty much going well in Joseph's life. He was chill, he was great, he was good, and he was Gucci and all those terms that she used today until Potiphar's wife decided that she wanted to sleep with him because he was handsome and charismatic, of course, all by God's grace. And because Joseph was so in sync with God, he was able to say no to her. Mind you, the temptation happened every day until to the point that Joseph had to run away. But in doing so, he left his cloak and Potiphar's wife made this whole case against him that led him to being in prison. Here's the reality check. Temptations happen all the time. It will always exist. I get tempted, Bob, Roberto, Cody, Trevor, Remy, we all get tempted. Your small group leaders get tempted. Don gets tempted. Jesus Christ himself got tempted. The issue here is, we often fail when we're tempted because we don't know whose we are, we don't know who we are, we don't know what to do. So when I think about overcoming temptations, two roles surface. First role is our role. The second role is God's role. Let me discuss to you our role. Our role, based on the story of Joseph, we need to refuse. We need to say no. Second is we need to acknowledge that it's sinning against God. Third is we need to run away. I'll say it again. Refuse, acknowledge its sin, and run away. God's role is found in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And it reads, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Three things I see based on this verse. God gives you the ability to refuse and say no. He won't give you anything beyond your ability. Second, He will always provide a way out. And third, He helps you endure so that you could stay the course. So again, two roles. Our role is to refuse temptation, to acknowledge that it is sin against God. And third is to run away from it. God's role is to give us the ability to say no to temptation, to provide a way out for us all the time, and to help us endure to stay the course. So now we pretty much know how to overcome temptations, but why? Why do temptations exist? Because character is tested when temptations are present. I'll say that again. Character is tested when temptations are present. Character is probably one of the most important things, if not the most important thing in a believer's life. Because character is who you are when no one's looking. Character equals the real you. So who are you? Maybe it's about time to ask yourself that. Who are you really? I'm not talking about being sinless. Because the moment we achieve sinlessness is the moment we don't need God's grace. But the goal here is not to be sinless, but to sin less. I'll say that again. The goal is not to be sinless, but to sin 
less. So here's the thought that helps me resist temptations. I recognize the fact that God knows me the most. He knows the deepest parts of me, the good, the bad, the ugly. Whenever I think about that, despite of him knowing who I really am, he still loves me. So that's why he loves me the most. So God loves me. God loves you the most. So here's the question that comes up whenever I'm faced with temptation. TJ, how could you hurt the one who loves you the most? And when I think about that question, it helps me refuse and say no to sin. It helps me acknowledge that it is sinning against God. And it helps me run away. And also, it helps me recognize and be aware that God is giving me the ability to say no. That God is providing a way out for me. And that God is helping me endure and stay the course. So when all is said and done, let me challenge you with this. How's your character? What do you do when no one's looking? Here's a testimony from Gracie Jones about overcoming temptations. Watch this. What's up, Midweek? I'm Gracie, and I'm really excited to share with you what God's been doing in my life recently. So, something that I'm often tempted with is anxiety. Now, anxiety might not sound like a temptation, but God says in His Word, be anxious for nothing, but pray about everything. Well, if he says that in his word, he must make it possible, right? Well, it doesn't always feel that way. Oftentimes, anxiety feels big and heavy and uncontrollable. But if you're anything like me, there's a lot of times where I feel anxious, I see a problem, I know it's coming, and instead of turning and focusing on God and bringing it to him, I focus on the problem and I let it become bigger than it should be, right? Well, I'm going to share a time with you recently where I didn't do that and what God did for me in that moment and how life-changing it was. So recently, a couple Sundays ago, I was starting to feel really anxious. And so I grabbed my journal and I went outside and I started to write down some prayers. I felt like my arms were just full of a bunch of stuff that was concerning me. And I felt like I was able to just kind of dump it at God's feet. And he spoke to me in that moment, just through different thoughts that were coming to my mind, and showed me what to do with each of those things that was bothering me, how to think about them, how not to be worried about them. And where I would usually feel really defeated in those moments that I had gotten to that anxious point, I didn't. I felt light and joyful and grateful and like I just had to share with somebody what God had just done for me. God showed me in that moment that I don't have to give in to the thing that is screaming for my attention, that feels real and often is real in the moment, but that He wants to be invited into those moments, that He wants to show me the way out and show me victory. And this is true of a lot of things in my life. I not only struggle with anxiety, I struggle with pride and lust and anger and jealousy. But when we run to God with those things, He gives life and victory and joy. And so I want to encourage you guys that whatever it is you're struggling with, the joy of running to God and the victory that He gives far outweighs anything that we could want for ourselves, anything that we could give into. It is possible, but it's not just about what you do. It's not just about bringing it to God, but it's about allowing God to work it out in you. I'm not there yet. This is still a process for me, but he's showing me every day that he's with me and that what he has for me is so much better than what the world has for me. Love you guys. Have a great week.
Unfortunately, friends, our time must come to an end here on Midweek Live, but I have good news. I have good news, friends.
It is smoke room time! Smoke room time right now. You know the drill. If you have your URL, make sure that you go to your small group, join in, continue the conversation from tonight. It was a great word from TJ. Loved hearing from Gracie. Great worship. Continue. Go to small group. Now, here's the deal. If you don't have your small group link, the keywords are going to show up on the screen. Text your campus's keyword to 97000, and we will be sending out the Zoom URLs within a couple minutes. So text the keyword for your campus to that number, 97000, and we'll get it to you. I hate to say goodbye, so I'm not going to say goodbye. I'm going to say this. See you next week. Bye. Love you guys.